Unfortunately, especially in this country and also in the westernized world, most people are incentivized to lose in life. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Thank you to all those who have been sharing this podcast on our social media platforms or on social media platforms. I've had a heap of you share just in the last couple of days, which is awesome. So I just want to say a massive thank you. You all know who you are. Now, let's talk about humans being incentivized to lose. Now, when we think about human behavior and psychology, I consistently reference at my events how you train a dog because I think dog training is such an interesting concept. Now, these things are essentially wild animals that have been trained to understand humans and how we operate. But they have some simple principles that humans can use. The first thing is, is if you want to toilet train a dog, you walk it outside, you show it the grass, and then it, when it wees on the grass, you normally you sit there and you wait for it. But when the dog wees on the grass, you then feed it or you incentivize it with a toy, depending on whether its reward mechanism is food or play. Some dogs, they like playing. Some dogs like food. Some dogs like both. So you've got to figure out which one. Now, let's just say it's a food-based reward. So the dog wheezes outside. You give it food. All of a sudden, the neurological circuits in the brain go, I just did something and I got rewarded. What was that thing? Then a little while later, you notice that the dog's walking a little bit funny through the house. So you take it outside and the next second it wees on the lawn and you give it some food. And the dog goes, whoa, hang on. There have been two times that I've weed outside and both times I've got food. Now, if you keep doing that over time, the dog goes, ah, when I wee outside, I get a reward. When I wee outside, then I get a reward. When I wee outside, then I get a reward. So the dog has been incentivized to wee outside. On the other hand, if you're like many dog owners that, that really don't train their dogs, Sometimes a dog will piss inside the house or, or we inside the house and the owner goes, bad dog, bad dog. And then the dog makes a sad face and the owner goes, oh, you poor thing. And then pats the dog and the dog's like, fuck, what just happened? I got told off for something, but I then got a pat. Oh, what did I do? Um, geez, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure I can't define it. And then when it goes outside and wheeze, no one's there to reward it. So it's like, oh, I don't know whether that's a good thing or not a good thing. And for a lot of the times, people don't know how to reward when rewards are due and punish when punishment is due. And so they don't know what's good and bad and right and wrong. Another example is dog comes running, jumps on the couch, only goes, get off the couch. The dog sh like freaks out a little bit, runs around the house. Then the owners are all sitting there laughing at the dog because the dog's running around the house. Then it comes over to the owner and the owner pats the dog. The dog's like, fuck, when I skits out, I get a pat. And then the owner wonders why the dog skits is out. I actually watched the lady. We live across the lake and today I was sitting outside and this lady had no recall on her dog. And so the dog runs and starts chasing after this guy who's running around the lake and the owner is yelling, get back here, get back here, bloody hell, get back here. And she's yelling, fucking dog, I can't believe the dog hasn't come back. Come here, you bastard. And so she's yelling at the dog and then the dog comes back and she goes, you bad dog. And then the next second the dog sits down and then she just keeps walking again. And then the dog runs off again. And I was like, the dog has no recall. That's not a dog problem. That's the owner problem because it doesn't train the dog properly. Now, what does this have to do with humans? Well, humans are exactly the fucking same. When my staff members come to me and they do something, like I had a great interaction with one of my staff members yesterday. They came to me and they said, look, our files are unstructured and it makes our workflow a lot harder. Is it possible to create a better workflow system and then restructure that whole part there because it'll make our job more efficient. And I said, that's bloody amazing. Like, this is incredible. Thank you so much. Like, I'm glad you pointed that out because it's something that I've been thinking about doing, but I'm glad you identified it. So what I'm doing is I'm rewarding him with praise, but then also telling him exactly what he's doing to get that praise. So what I said was, I was thinking about doing it because I knew it needed to be done. You've identified it, which is a great thing. And I really appreciate that you've identified a problem or a roadblock in your workflow you were thinking ahead about a solution and then you came to me with a solution. So I essentially have rewarded him for the three steps that he took to bring up this topic. So now he feels good. Then I messaged him yesterday after the meeting and said, hey mate, really appreciate you bringing this up. Like it's awesome that you were able to identify a problem, give a solution and then take responsibility for it. And he said, oh, I've been wanting to do this for ages. I just didn't know how to approach it. And I was like, nah, it's absolutely brilliant. So by doing that, we incentivize people to do more of the same thing. So a dog might get rewarded through food or it might get rewarded through play or it might get rewarded through interaction. Humans are very similar. If a child throws a tantrum and then the parent goes, 
oh, I'll just get it a chocolate. And then you give it a chocolate. The child goes, when I throw a tantrum, I get rewarded. And so it will keep throwing a tantrum and keep getting rewarded for throwing a tantrum. So we have to be aware of our interactions. This is why at my live events, if someone is upset, I do not hug them or touch them. Whereas most people, when someone's upset, they hug them. But what they're doing is they're essentially giving affection when someone is upset. That there can start linking people to want to get affection when they have problems or chaos. And there are a lot of people, I would say probably 90 to 95% of our society use emotional dysregulation in order to get some sort of reward or affection or notice from somebody. Jess used to do it in our relationship. She would get angry or upset about things and not communicate effectively with me. And then we would end up in an argument, but it was because she really wanted to connect. She just didn't know how to say, hey, look, I'm feeling a bit lonely or I feel like we haven't really connected this week. Can we have some time to talk? So she would just get upset and frumpy about shit and walk around the house and point out all these fucking things that I'd done wrong that weren't that big a deal. Then I would get pissed off and would argue. Now, we're still getting connection. It's just not a beneficial way of connecting. So remember, all humans do things because of their reward mechanism and their punishment mechanism. If you don't want someone to do something, don't keep rewarding it. I saw a program the other day where there were all these kids who didn't want to go to school because they, they got told that they had social anxiety and all these anxieties and bullshit. Now that there, I could guarantee I could solve 90% of those issues. And every time the parent would sit there and justify and say, yeah, but they didn't want to go to school and they would get upset. I did exactly the same thing when I was a kid, except my mum would drag me to fucking school and tell me to go to school. And so she would punish me for not doing the thing that she wanted me to do. So I learned that when I don't go to school, I get in trouble. Now, I had to decide whether that's how I wanted my interaction with my mum or not. So we all have these different reward mechanisms or not. It's also the reason why kids are causing a lot of problems in America and Australia at the moment, because there's no punishment mechanism for them doing the wrong thing. And then they get rewarded for doing the wrong thing. As in, I can break into a house or a shop and post it on social media. And then I end up with thousands of interactions or thousands of people talking about it. And then I get more followers and more likes, which then is a validation. So people do stupid shit because they get validated. Now, what does this have to do with people having incentives to lose? So if we think about it online now, if you go to social media, there are a lot of people who are getting validation for doing stupid things. So I was watching these guys with stolen cars in the middle of traffic lights at late at night where all these young kids would all stand around in big circles and these people with stolen cars would come in and do burnouts and then they would film it and they would try to get really close to the car. And so them getting close to the car was like a really cool thing. But then some of them got run over, some of them been hit. And this is like a common thing that happens, especially in the US, where all these young kids stand around in the center of an intersection and these people come in with cars and do burnouts. But the cars go out of control and kill kids. They crash into kids and break legs. I watched one kid get run over. But why do they do it? Because they're incentivized to do it. Every one of these fucking morons is standing there with a mobile phone in their hand with a light on shooting for social media. They're live streaming or, or shooting. And so they're getting validation through this attention. And because of that, they're feeling loved or they're feeling like they're getting something from other people. This incentivization is happening throughout our whole society. Today, I've been not feeling the best just the last probably couple of months, and I've noticed that I think my testosterone levels are a little bit low. Now, when I go to the doctor, I want to try and get all my tests done, but the problem is a lot of doctors won't do that because I'm healthy and I don't really have a problem. Now, if I was sick, let's say I was sick, like let's say I was shitting blood, I could go there and get as many blood tests as I needed from the doctor, and I could go to hospital, which would cost taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars or even tens of thousands of dollars for all these tests. Yeah, I go to the doctor and say, hey, look, I'm feeling a bit off. Can I get my testosterone checked? Can I get all my hormone levels checked? And the doctor goes, oh, well, I don't really think that there's a need for all those things. And I'm like, listen here, motherfucker, I'm trying to stay healthy. Why do I got to be sick in order to then get a blood test? Now, the problem is, is that there is an incentivization in Australia and America especially Australia, because we have what's known as a healthcare system, which isn't about healthcare. It rewards sick people. So if I'm sick as fuck, I can go to the doctor every day. I can talk to them every day. I can get insights. I can get useful information. I can go get all these tests. But when I'm healthy and I go and I say, hey, look, I want a heart test. The doctor goes, but you don't have any symptoms. And I go, yeah, but I think I do. I also want to check it out. Like I'm 40. I exercise hard. I want to go and get my heart tested. Well, look, I don't know. And then so I got to go and then shop around and try to find different doctors who will actually you know, try to look after what I'm after because, you know, I do work in under high pressure and high stress. 
I just want to make sure I'm healthy. I don't want to have a heart attack or anything like that. Also, the other thing that I want to do is I want to get all my hormones checked. But unfortunately, very hard to do that in Australia. As a male, it is very, very hard to get hormone replacement therapy or anything like that, which a lot of men need. But if you're a woman, you can. And if you're a 13-year-old girl that wants to transition to a male, you can get hormone replacement. But it is almost impossible for men to get it in Australia, which is crazy. Now, the problem with this whole system, and I don't want to beat up on the system because I think healthcare is a great thing in Australia, but unfortunately, people are incentivized to be sick to get free healthcare. It is almost impossible to get free healthcare when you are healthy and want to stay healthy. You know, and Jess said something today that was great. And she said, what should happen is that if you don't have a hospital visit or a doctor's visit within a 12-month period, there should be a reduction of tax. And I think that's a great idea. So people who tend to treat themselves worse, they still have to pay standard tax rate. But if over time, it should be the same as insurance, because the government are essentially insuring their citizens are healthy. Insurance, if you don't have a car accident for years, you become a rating one driver. Therefore, you should have a reduction in the premium. Now, that doesn't happen, unfortunately, with nationalized healthcare like we have here in Australia. And so again, if you're sick as fuck, my grandmother was one of those people. My grandmother was sick all the time and she was at the doctors every week and she would have cameras and shit stuck in every fucking orifice every week. She would have be blood tested. All these different tests should be in hospital for cancer treatments and all that stuff. She probably cost the Australian taxpayer anywhere between half a million to a million dollars, if not more, in treatment and therapy. Now, I don't want to get to that position. I want to stay healthy. But it is so hard to do that in Australia because, first of all, doctors are shit scared of the medical associations here or APRA, and they have them breathing down their neck all the time that they really can't step outside of any guidelines that are average guidelines. But unfortunately, average guidelines are for average people who do average shit, not great people who want to do great things. So the medical system is very rarely built up of great doctors who want to do great things because they normally get kicked out of the industry. And the first second that they fuck up, APRA or the medical association breathe down their neck and take them out, which sucks. But I know it's happened to many, many doctors because I, I, I have a lot of insight into the healthcare industry and, and so on. So the reason why I want to use this is because, first of all, I want to use it as a sounding board that in this country, we have to change this idea of sick care and then incentivizing it in, in a way where people want to be healthy and looked after. The second thing that has to change is that we really need to start thinking about how we use reward mechanisms, both for ourselves or others. Because if you're in an intimate relationship, and your partner isn't paying you attention, instead of having a, a high quality conversation at the right time with the right language and the right tonality and making sure that you're a great communicator with your partner, most people just get pissed off and they start saying shit that then creates chaos in the home dynamic or in the home environment where they start picking fights or they just get pissed off or they shut down. I see it happen. My mum and dad used to do it where my dad just wouldn't talk to my mum or my mum wouldn't talk to my dad. That's not a fucking good way of doing things, but she was pissed off about something, but wouldn't communicate it. And then my dad would have to try to figure it out. And it's not a good way of incentivizing things in life. If you've got employees, you have to think about how to incentivize them. Now you don't have to pay them more because that's not always an incentive, but just rewarding them, like as in letting them know that they've done a great job, public incentivization by letting them know that they've done a great job in front of other people. That is super important. Okay. That's why I, you know, I do that with all of you as well who share this podcast or share what I do with other people or refer people to our programs because I, I think that it's super important to reward people for doing the right thing, not punishing people for just doing the wrong thing or even worse, not knowing when to punish and reward someone like the dog that doesn't know what the fuck's going on because you just yelled at it and then you pat it one second later and it doesn't know what's going on. So really think about your incentivization systems that you use with your kids, in your intimate relationship, in the working environment, with the people around you. How do you reward? And then how do you also reprimand? Letting people get away with shit when they do it and then getting pissed off and being pissed off for two days and then yelling at them two days later because now you're really pissed off about something. That's not a good idea. You're better off just confronting it straight away. So when someone does something wrong at work or, or something that's not working, I let them know immediately because it's a way of them identifying it and changing that pattern really, really quickly. But if you do it in a nice, friendly way, in a nice, friendly tone, they're normally pretty good. So yeah, have a good thing, Driven Mofos. I hope this helps. Communication is super important, especially around when you're around other people and also making sure that you're having good relationships. Communication is something that we have to learn. It's something that we always need to be growing. 
And if we want to become more effective as a leader, as a teacher, and more inspiring, we have to learn how to communicate. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking ass. And I look forward to joining me back here for another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Also, if you haven't rated and reviewed this podcast, please do so. Let's keep pushing this up the podcast rankings. Take care, everyone. Most people waste their life, and I just don't want you to be one of them.